what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Midwest Meltdown. It's your boy, Zach. And Josh, very excited about this week's episode. I'm very excited. Before too. we get started, I got to do our ad read. Today's episode is brought to you by The Gallery. We talked about it last week, and we're going to talk about it again this week. Based out of New York, The Gallery is a curated collection of photographs from around the world. While we're all unable to travel right now, this is a great way to bring a piece of the world to you. All the prints are made from 100% recycled aluminum, giving your wall that gallery finish. Right now, the gallery is offering our listeners 15% off their purchase by using the code 15OFF. That's the number 15, capital O, capital F, capital F. Go to thegallery.com. Note the spelling. That's G-A-L-R-Y.com. So your wall will never be boring again. Zach, did you buy your gallery stuff yet? I haven't. I was just about to say, I've been looking online. I am still stuck between two, actually, now. There's one, I... <laughs> the Iceland one I sent you, and mm-hmm. there's the the Greek beach one that I think oh, would look that's a good one. really, really cool because our bathroom, like our guest bathroom, has a very beach-type feel to it, and I feel like it would look really nice up on the wall. That would be good. That, that would be good. I still have four in there, so I still got to whittle mine oh, down. Jesus Christ! I know, I know. It's tough. <laughs> I, I put out our. I put a, a tweet out for our last episode, and I put the discount code in there, and I said, if you enter in fifteen off, you get. Wait for it, fifteen percent off. I didn't know if you knew that or not, but. <laughs> amazing deal <laughs> i know it's really good honestly the artwork's phenomenal so if you guys go and check it out uh yeah it's it's so good that we haven't even decided which ones we want yet yeah the photos are awesome like <laughs> legit they are just really cool i talk go listen to me talk about it last week uh yeah. i i don't know i really like them really like them so they will right. be in my apartment at some point that is for sure all right okay Let's, let's get into it. Let's get into it. <laughs> let's get into this. So as I'm sure you guys all know, last week and probably, I mean, I think this happened a few weeks ago, Ubisoft has decided to come out and say the awe-inspiring thing of women lead video game characters don't sell. If you're confused right now, stop this episode and go listen to, you sure you want to post that? Yes. To contextualize what we're about to talk about. And then if you're still confused, just type in Ubisoft sexist and you'll find. <laughs> <laughs> you'll it's get... just their logo. <laughs> you'll get quite a few hits, let me tell you. <laughs> but let me say, dude, I, I mean, okay, so last week we were talking, we're like, all right, this week we're going to do women in video games because we wanted to fucking tell Ubisoft to go fuck themselves because they are wrong in a lot a lot of ways uh, so josh and i basically compiled together lists of either women just characters in general whether they're lead characters side characters whatever any like just strong powerful women involved in video games so i got a pretty ladies list in video games exactly I'm, I'm sure you have a pretty strong list just 17 just, you have 17. 17 people on my list yikes <laughs> I've got well, here. I don't have seventeen, but I have four with a lot of additional facts to go into their background. So I think you just okay, like, good. So yeah, so I like I said, I've got let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have ten, but like I said, four of which I've got like numbers for sales, um, like articles, everything. Awesome. Okay, so. Is there any other background you want to provide, or should we dive into it? Because I have a an idea for how we should start it off. Let, let's dive in. Let's if you have, if you have the idea, go for it. Okay, I want to read my list. Okay. The end of the list is going to be a hundred dollar bet, and oh I want to see God. which ones we have in common, and then we'll dive into our content. Okay, so I've got okay. ten. Let's see if, how many of my ten match up with your seventeen. Okay, pretty certain number one on mine. It, oh, this isn't in any sort of order. So okay. first one, uh, Lara Croft. Samus. Yep. Uh, Miranda Lawson from the Mass Effect series. Uh, duh. Okay. Ashley Williams from the Mass, Mass Effect series. I don't have her on here. I, I don't. I just put Miranda on there. She, like, I think I was just going through my head in that franchise, and I was like, Miranda's the first one that popped in my head, but Ashley has okay. also another solid choice. And Jack from the Mass Effect series. <laughs> Son of a bitch. No, but yes, that's another She has novel. a good story. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get into it. We'll get into yeah, it. that's fair. Um, and then Oracle or Barbara Gordon from the Arkham games. No, but that's another good one. I didn't even think about that. 
Uh, I, I think that's then, because I haven't really gotten into those games. I like I've gotten through right now. I'm probably about halfway through Arkham Asylum, which is the first one, correct? Yep. yep and yep, I haven't yep, yep. physically met her in person yet, so I feel like I don't have that strong of a connection to like if I to, like the thing. Uh, yeah, she's a little more prominent in Arkham City and okay. uh, Arkham Knight for sure. So okay, makes sense. Okay, next is Catwoman from the Arkham games. Uh, no, <laughs> again. Yep, sorry, you didn't play Arkham City yet. Nope. Okay, next is Maya. The Siren from Borderlands 2. Maya. With, with the phase walk uh, oh, special. Oh, no, but damn it. that's a, I didn't even think about that one. That's a good one. Shit. Yep. And then on, uh, following her, again, no order, is Lilith, the Four. original Siren from Borderlands yes. 1. Yes. And then following her, because she just cracks me up every time I talk to her, is Mad Moxie. <laughs> Man, I don't have her on here, from but Borderlands. I knew you were going to go there. Yep. Okay, next is Bonnie McFarland from Red Dead Redemption 1. Oh, fuck! No, but I'm adding yeah. her right now. God damn it. And then, <laughs> I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> We're no. just talking about <laughs> Well, no, that's fine. No, I'm just thinking, like, that, like, the ideal strong character. And what the hell? Oh, my God. What was the woman's name in Red Dead 2? She's even, like, more... I didn't finish it, though, so I don't, I don't know. All right, keep going. I'm going to look it up quick. All right. Athena from the God of War series. I do have her on there, actually, yes. Okay, Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite. No, I don't. But speaking of our last episode about side sidekicks, rightfully yep. so. This one you're gonna like, but I'm almost certain is not on your list. Okay. Uh, Snow White from um, Wolf Among oh, Us. Oh, Wolf Among Us. No, but that is a good choice though. That is actually mm-hmm. really good. Sadie, by the mm-hmm. way, is her name. Sadie in uh, from RDR two. RDR2. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more of that. I know you didn't finish the game, but I'm not going to spoil anything, but we'll get into her a little bit more, too. Okay. Uh, almost certain you don't have this. Uh, Claire Redfield from Resident Evil series. No. The only one. Uh, you going. Might have this one. Elena from Uncharted. Uh, yes, I do. Yep. Okay. So, okay. So now this is my last one. Okay. Now I need to ask you a question that people will listen to this and you have to promise me on chance that you did not read my list on our document. I swear, hand to God, I did, I honestly didn't see any of your list. I didn't even know you put it on there, to be honest. I just made my own list. I, so I actually had, I swear before everybody, I did not read it. Okay. I Including actually, Chance the Gila Monster. It, it, yes. Yes. Uh, anything. Honestly. Okay. Say anything. I'll swear on anything. I did not see your list. Um, All right. $100 bet. What's my last female character for see here's the best part is because i actually have quite a few still on this list that you didn't list off i just want you to know that if you do guess it Mm -hmm. there's no part of me that will believe that you actually get (laughs) so because it's a little wacky and it's kind of funny oh shit i should stop talking okay go ahead it's kind of funny well shit all right, my guess is going to be Clementine from The Walking Dead. Oh, no. Fuck. Um, so this is funny. So just, just listen to me when I say it. it. <laughs> and only because I am just, I'm wanting this series to go all the way to the top in Summer Madness. Okay. Summer Madness. <laughs> it's the doe from Big Buck Hunter. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, hear me out. Hear me out. We talked about all these. I or I have this big list, right? Yeah. Um, none of those ladies literally end your game like that. The doe does. You shoot a doe, they're fucking your rounds over. That is She's true. Powerful. She's powerful. Wow. All right. Well, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie to you. That that was like a million dollar bet. I there was no fucking chance. I was no, I'm never gonna get that. That's why I said I wouldn't. I would know. I would never believe if you said those words. I would. I don't know. The only way I ever would have got that is if by some stupid list online, someone was like, powerful women in video games, and some jackass like yourself just made, like, number 100 on the list being, like, the doe from Big Buck Hunter, just because, just to be, like, funny. I mean, she she has stopping power. Oh, her. my God. That is, okay, fine. That is true. All right. I will say this. The ones that you did not say that I have on my list, yep. um, Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn, okay. Ellie from The Last of Us, Avi. Um, Avi. Chloe Frazier from Lost Legacy or the Uncharted series. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of surprised you didn't have her on here, but uh, what the fuck? Jill Valentine? 
Resident Evil? Because I picked well, because I picked Claire. Oh well, you picked multiple other women from the same franchise. So I was kind of I curious. I think the... Claire is cooler than Jill. Tbh, Elemental oh, okay. P. Okay. Uh, well, as you heard, I said Clementine from The Walking Dead. She obviously in the first season is not like she's just like the side character you play as Lee. Um, spoiler alert: you play as Clementine later on because Lee got his fucking head blown off, or maybe not. Depends. Um, and then Clementine though is the one you play as for seasons two, three, and four. And you actually, it's yep. kind of cool. You get to see her grow up and become a more, you know, like strong, independent woman that she is. And uh, it's it's pretty cool. Um, let's see here. And the other one I did that you didn't say was Alex Vance from Half Life. I just figured from the popularity of those games, it's at least. Oh what, yeah, I don't have a lot of familiarity, so neither do I. But like I said, I just remember they came out with Alex, like the uh, um, the VR game for half-life and it, everyone was pretty hyped about it so it was just on the list saw it and i was like oh that's a pretty solid one to put down um but i do want to bounce back now to lara croft miss let's bounce lara croft because again the whole thing we're focusing on here is ubisoft who as we all know basically said their comments from uh the assassin's creed games being made so uh i did read online that during Odyssey, during the, cre- the during the production of Odyssey, the actual female character, or sorry, the main character was supposed to be female, but then execs basically said, no, 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 we want a male because women don't sell, hence why we're here now. So, yep. as we all know, again, Ubisoft Assassin's Creed. So, the stat that I found, and this is according to a Forbes article, so Forbes, pretty popular, so I'd like to give them some solid credit here. <laughs> this is I'm so excited funny. for this number. This is so fucking fitting worldwide so from the time tomb raider started and the time assassin's creed started up until april 2nd 2018 when this article was published assassin's creed worldwide had made 240 million dollars okay tomb raider made 245 million dollars Ooh, <laughs> fucking laying down the facts motherfuckers and I'm pretty sure Assassin's Creed up to that point had way more titles than Tomb Raider. Assassin's Creed drops a fucking game in the toilet every two months. It's like Call of Duty. Well, yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, to it's that true. frequency, though, seriously. Yeah, no, it's like it's like all of a sudden they're, you know, like Odyssey, Origins, Valhalla now. And then before that, it was like one, two, three, and then it was Syndicate, then it was Unity, then it was Black Flag. It was like, and then Black Flag was good, but it's like, yeah, you keep throwing shit at a wall. Something's going to stick at some point. Right. But so no, hilarious. That yeah, if you broke that down by number per title, Tomb Raider would have a much higher number. Oh, for um, sure. So eat a dick. So again, obviously, those numbers very easily could have changed by now. But again, I think that's kind of skewed because, again, if you look at how many games of um assassin's creed have come out since then it's like well obviously but again eat a dick because yes five million dollars more worldwide and it's like that completely contradicts everything they just said so go fuck yourself yeah and tomb raider had a long hiatus between games so again huge yeah so they they had what their definitive edition the one that i just finished was what 2015 (laughs) And before that, it was like early 2000s, I'm pretty sure. I th- yeah, I think it was 06 or something. Yeah, so. If I can remember correctly. Whatever. So actually, Fuck not whatever, it. but that's so, that's is, the culmination. Isn't that dope, though? <laughs> I found that online, that's and I was funny. like, that's, like, I'm like, there's no way this wasn't meant to be. Like, finding that the comparison was to Assassin's Creed of all fucking things, too. I was like, oh, God, thank you. Isn't that funny? Yeah. <laughs> so fucking funny. Um. Let's see. Okay, here. so did you have more to talk about Lara Croft? Otherwise, we shouldn't spend too much time. Otherwise, we'll be no, here forever. Lara Croft. We, okay. I mean, she's, she's Lara Croft. She fucking people know about her. She speaks for herself. We've talked yeah, about her a lot. Exactly. Uh, Samus, we've talked about a fair amount. So, all the Metroid games. Yep. Uh, the only thing that I'll say, just to make sure it's on record, is like that was one of the biggest twists in video games. I mean, the almost the biggest up to that point and still mm-hmm. remains is when you find out that Samus is a woman because you didn't know that until you beat the game. Fun fact. So, right? you're doing all this. So it's kind of cool, right? You're doing all this yeah. badass shit, you know, beating aliens, and you're like, oh, I'm such a badass, right? you know, rocking the stuff. Dude, at the end of the game, it's like, oh, also, she's a lady. Ba, so ba, ba. Well, fun fact, that ending does not exist in Japan. 
Is that right? I, fi- I mean, again, this is based on articles I was researching online. Um, the final bikini reveal at the end of that game does not exist in the country of Japan. Huh. I don't Very know. I, I don't really know why they didn't really expand on it too much. They kind of just said that, yeah, it's just that's the fucking way it is. So I was like, oh, interesting. Um, but yeah, like how fucking dope is that though? Like the fact that you're playing this whole game, like you said, and then all of a sudden it's just like boom, woman, and everyone's just like, whoa. All yeah, because right, you had uh, no indication that it was going to be a female, right? No. You know, you typically think it was a male. I mean, even still back then, but even still in 2020, your chances are if you make a video game character elite, it's going to be a male. It's still Correct. the case. Well, so yeah, especially big, big surprise. You're in like a space suit, obviously you can't tell or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, no, fucking, it's crazy. I mean, I looked up again more stats on that. Metroid de- debuted in 1985. Um, let's see, million, obviously millions of copies sold. I mean, again. <laughs> You include now Samus has made their may made her way into the um Smash the, Sma- the Smash Bros and, franchise. Yeah. And actually in both in suit and out of suit, you can play as both and I think in uh Ultimate, I believe. Melee at least. Melee. Melee is the uh, yeah. I know I think there's another one, but I I know you can do that. Um and then actually I did I know if you know this, but there were fifteen Metroid games from nineteen eighty five to two thousand eighteen. Did not know that. Fifteen different did not games. Know that. Yeah. Would not have guessed it either. I mean, if you think about across the consoles too, it's like Jesus. I would have guessed about eight. So, yeah, exactly. I would have guessed, yeah, probably about seven or eight is probably what I would guess. But um, again, like we all know, millions of copies sold. Like, come on, like fuck out of here. Um, and again, this was all again. So like the the reveal was what that was early in the or was that the eighty five version. That was the first game. The first game, yeah. So think about it. So people already know that like the the the, the base has been set that it she is a female, like Samus is a female. So every copy after that, it's not like, oh, we're just gonna switch over to a fucking male at any point. Like people know, okay, we're buying a female lead character, and oh, wouldn't you know it? People still fucking bought the game. Wouldn't you know it, Ubisoft? Wouldn't you oh, oh there it is. Wouldn't you know? <laughs> right. Okay, next uh Miranda Lawson. Miranda Do you have Watson. anything? I'll let you start because uh, I don't know. No, I, I, I will here. I, I will say this. The people who I have a few more notes on. Or, well, actually, really quick. I want to get back into Samus really fast. I saw a post. Okay. Brie Larson commented Samus. saying she would be interested in playing Samus if a movie remake a movie uh, was made of Metroid. Yeah, I saw that. That'd be actually pretty cool. That'd be dope. I feel like she'd be a pretty solid uh, uh, casting choice for Samus if it came that to does a fit Metroid right. movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that'd be so that'd be dope i saw that i was like that'd be fucking cool um For sure. i will say this the two other characters that i have a little more in depth on are aloy and Ellie. okay okay so then i'll do miranda lawson you can add okay. anything as needed mm-hmm. um she so my three mass effect characters i'm not going to explain why they're in there if you mm-hmm. listen to any of our episodes. So <laughs> what I like about her, she, when you first meet her, she works for the elusive man and she has like unwavering loyalty to him because she, he essentially saved her uh, when she was a child. So she, she kind of owes him her life. She feels, but then all of a sudden the elusive man's kind of being a dick and she has to make obviously a hard choice between supporting Ch- Shepard and doing the right thing or staying loyal to the elusive man. She obviously fucking, Digs deep, does the right stuff. Uh, also played by the gorgeous Yvonne Strahovski. So, Jesus, dude. <laughs> I know, literally. <laughs> I got nothing else to add for her. Take a moment of sounds for her beauty. Thank you. All right, moving on. <laughs> Ashley Williams. Um, oh, I can't believe you actually did that. that cool. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, kind of the same reason i mean she's a badass she's more of the soldier type her dad was a a soldier she's by the book she's super tough um one of the best scenes at the end of mass effect 3 if you get that certain ending that i love that's fine but i will say the best story that i pulled from my female mass effect characters in terms of picking out a female to essentially lead the charge would be Mm -hmm. jack so she was uh uh, biotic she had a huge aptitude for biotic powers and she was like kidnapped as a kid and forced to uh live in like essentially uh like a boarding school type for biotics where she was mm-hmm. like abused and tested on and all this nasty stuff and eventually she breaks out and she's just super powerful with her biotic <laughs> powers and obviously she's pissed off at the people who stole her life and uh just like kind of a really cool redemption story kind of, cause you do take her back there and she does get some closure, which is really cool. So, right. 
All right, you can talk now for a little bit. Um, let's see. Well, what I wanted to say was um, – no, I wanted to jump into Aloy. So I think that the biggest thing that at least when I was focusing on these four women, which is Lara Croft, Aloy, Ellie, and Samus, is that – the biggest part about them is that they're the lead characters. Like I know, obviously you're referencing characters that are not like primary playable characters, but however, they're still oh, very yeah. powerful women. Um, but the thing I really wanted to focus on, at least like I said, with my list of in-depth women was the fact that they are the lead, like you're playing them whole time, you know, nothing else about it. Um, and the one that I have here is Aloy, which you haven't still played. You still haven't played horizon zero dawn, right? Correct. Oh, dude phenomenal phenomenal game basically uh premise of the game is humanity has wiped itself pretty much clean off the map which god forbid is probably gonna happen soon um so you should probably play (laughs) the game actually just to kind of prepare um yeah but what humanity did though is they created this program called horizon zero dawn where they basically started from scratch and they created um I'm sorry if I'm butchering this, by the way. If I do get a storyline mixed up, so anybody who's listening, they basically created. You're not spoiling, like, are you? No, 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 no. Okay. They, they created machines to help, um, kind of like regulate things, I suppose. But like, there was apparently oh, and a, that backfired. I'm shocked. Yeah, exactly. Well, there was a virus that got into it. You look at that. You learn about. I can't, I won't say what goes on there, but basically, a virus gets in, and there's certain animals that are like certain machines. I should say that are obviously like hostile. Um, blah blah blah. So then, like, there's people fighting against each other. But the whole time, you're Aloy, and she was. Oh, I can't actually say where her origins from because again, that's another spoiler alert. But basically, okay. she's raised by a man and was trained and everything to try to get through these trials. And she's just a badass bitch. Like she's just awesome. Like everything about her from uh, all of her uh, when she again going through her training, her, her jumping, her combat, her like taking all these machines down. She's just fucking cool. And she just doesn't take. She honestly doesn't take shit from anybody. Like if you go through a lot of like the talking stuff, she just. No, none of it. Not having any. Snapping anything. necks and cashing checks. You could say that. I mean, I don't know if she snaps necks, but she definitely kills people. Um, there you go. In the U.S., I will say, in the U.S., Horizon Zero Dawn is the third best-selling PS4 exclusive behind only God of War 2018, a small little title, um, and Marvel Spider-Man, another small little uh, little title. That just God, Sony is just fucking bending microsoft over in like, the exclusive game seriously and then um 10 million copies of horizon zero dawn have been sold since um from its release in 2018 i believe up until february that was numbers up till february of 2019 gotcha okay and now obviously they released the highly anticipated second one or they teased it for the next gen which i am so fucking pumped for um yeah so again, I think when you're when you're a, a female lead and you're the third best, only behind Spider Man and God of War, like that's decent. I think that's a that's a very fair, that's fair company. That's a respectable bronze medal. I mean, that's like that's bronze at the Olympics. Like you go there, obviously you want gold, but you're like, you know what? If I just medal, I'm cool with it. Yeah, like, like you're still bronze at the Olympics. Exactly. Ain't nothing to fucking wag your finger at. Exactly. Um. All right, want me to dive into a couple? I was going to say, do you got somebody next here? I'll do my Borderlands entries. Mm, Um, Okay. So Maya and Lilith are the two sirens from Borderlands 1 and 2. Super powerful, super awesome. Lilith is really funny the entire time during Borderlands 2 because she now has a speaking role because they brought her forward from Borderlands 1. Mm -hmm. And she obviously plays a big role in the story. Uh, Maya was probably my one of my favorite characters to play through out of the whole series because i really like her phase lock ability Mm -hmm. um that's her special so she was super dope she had super awesome um skins and stuff like that like way cooler than the commandos okay um so i really enjoyed that and the color scheme that you could set it up with so she's probably one of my favorite characters of the whole series to be honest okay so those are the two sirens just i mean all of these people are fucking awesome so we don't need to keep saying that specifically moxie on the other hand now, this is an interesting because <laughs> she is obviously like a hypersexualized character, um, <laughs> self-imposed, essentially. She she owns that. And what's what's funny is it's, you know, because 
whether or not you choose to admit it or not, I mean, go look at Dead or Alive and all the females <laughs> from like Soul Calibur it's, and Mortal it's Kombat. Just, it's just horny, geeky nerds developing video game characters. Like, what do you yeah, want? Yeah, like, the fact of the matter is women are sexualized in video games. That's right. There's really no two ways about it. So what's funny about Moxie is her character uses it to her advantage. So she knows that she's a super sexual person, but then there's points where she will make people fall in love with her or there are people that are still in love with her that have wronged her and she has you kill them because they're obviously <laughs> being dicks. So she kind of owns that and uses it to her advantage to, she might not be physically strong or have powers like the two sirens, but she's obviously very smart and she understands how to navigate the world and use, you know, use that to her advantage. So just right. a different, different little thing. And she's fucking hilarious. So <laughs> she really is fucking funny. And you, honestly, the thing you had to give her too, is like, she, like you said, she owns it. Like some people try to be fake as you know, fake as fuck, and just try to be like something else. She's like, she's like, I know what I'm fucking about. I'm fucking Moxie. Like, the this fuck is out, me. The fuck out of here. Um, yep. I will say really quick, adding in because um, last a uh, few days ago we had matchup in the Summer Madness. Summer Madness of Borderlands taking on Uncharted Two and Borderlands moving on. So I just wanted nice. to throw a little nugget in there since we had the Borderlands talk going on. Uh, Borderlands, well Good done. Update. Good update. Um, let's see here. Who else? Do you have anybody else from the Borderlands franchise? Nope, that's it. Okay, let's see here. Um, I actually, I hear. I do want to get in because you mentioned Bonnie McFarland and, from yep. Red Dead, and then I also wanted to bring up Sadie from Red Dead Redemption Two. Um, okay. So obviously, we know Bonnie McFarland. Um, you can kind of chime in too if you'd like. Uh, one of the first people you meet to help John Marston after he attempted to uh, – who did he confront at that fort? Bill Williamson. Bill, Was it Bill? Okay, it was Bill. Yep. Um, confronted Bill. He got shot, dragged away. Bonnie was there to help. Bonnie take, saved his life. Bonnie saved his life. Um, basically helped him around, you know, help around the ranch and stuff. And Bonnie is just like your – your hardened, you know, hardworking woman. Like, like she's got the farm. I think she's with her dad. Is it? Yeah, I, they don't mention the mom. So the mom must have been gone or died Just or something. Whatever. It's the West. People. She had to die step up. Yeah. She gets um, it done. She does, and um, you kind of like do farm work for her and stuff like that. But either way, Bonnie is just like the the pinnacle of you know that again the hard-working western woman so the coolest part about red dead 2 is obviously you jump back in time but you meet a woman called sadie and actually you know who sadie is because you meet her like right out of the gate you okay. go to that cabin um you're it's all winter time and stuff and you're trying to confront this gang and they were actually they had kidnapped her and they were going to rape her and they killed her husband um but you saved her oh. and you brought her into your into the gang so to speak. Okay. Um, yeah. But the coolest part, and you'll see it as, as you play it, and I'm not spoiling anything, but she develops into probably one of the coolest fucking female characters that you play with, across, I, in my opinion, across any video game. She because, comes into her own, huh? Oh my god. She turns into like this badass bounty hunter, basically. Like You take her on missions with you and stuff, or you do like certain missions with her, and she's just again a super big badass and her the best part about it though is the story arc like when you first met her she was just like this scared you know woman she was you know again about to be raped her husband had been killed like all this stuff and you take her into this gang and she really comes into her own and just again turns into this super badass woman and i'm like that is that's so fucking cool i mean honestly i wish i would have been able to play as her yeah yeah that would have been dope um, you know what's interesting? Oh, mm-hmm. did you have more? Otherwise, no, I was gonna... no, no, no. Go ahead. Um, speaking of that, so because I'll t- uh, jump to one of my other entries, which is Claire Redfield from Resident Evil Two, and then okay. the rest of the Resident Evil games that she's in. Mm-hmm. And what's cool about that is that you say so. Oftentimes in video games, there the main character has some sort of power or something. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, something that gives them an edge, but there is always, and this is the reason why like the Punisher is one of my favorite superheroes um, is because he's still just a man. And, and by man, I don't mean male. I mean, just a human man. And uh, these people are just standard human females, but they come, they end up being awesome characters who kick ass. Right. So mm-hmm. like Claire Redfield was on her way home from college or to find her, to find Chris, her brother who was missing or whatever the fuck it was. And she stumbled upon RPD, Raccoon city police department. And it's like, Oh, 
I have to fight fucking zombies. Like, and just, <laughs> and does it, and you know, she finds the girl. I can't remember her name right now. But mm-hmm. so, like, those stories are cool to me because then it's like, okay, you know, regular people can do extraordinary things, you know, whereas people right. like Jack from Mass Effect, it's like, well, you're one of the most powerful beings that we've ever met. Like, of course you're going to kick ass. Like, right. It's not, it's not as cool. It's still cool, but it's not as cool because, like, I mean, I don't know. You got kind of a leg up. Well, it's cooler when it's cooler, I think. And, and this goes for male, female, whatever. It's obviously cooler when you have, for example, like a Nathan Drake or anybody who basically is just like a normal human. Yep. Like, obviously, it's a video game, so they're going to be a little bit more you know, able to jump from like cliff to cliff or shit like that right. or it's fight just, zombies. Yeah. But it's cooler. You have, a, I think, a better connection with somebody like even Commander Shepard, for that matter. Or like when you're looking yeah. at anybody like it's just it's it's that human connection that I think is way more powerful than and, you know, any sort of yeah. biomechanic, whatever. Way easier to identify with somebody who doesn't have superpowers. For sure. For sure. Yep. Um, I do just want to give two quick shout outs to Chloe Frazier and Elena Fisher from the Uncharted series. Um, I will say that Chloe is the playable character in Lost Legacy. I don't know if you have you played Lost Legacy? No. Um, so for those who don't know, uh, DLC to Uncharted 4 um, officially was labeled as DLC. I don't know if you actually knew that or not. Um, that I know. Th- okay. Um, great great playthrough um again i think just the human interaction you know chloe when you first met her and was was it uncharted 2 was the first thing you met her in uncharted 2 yep yeah it was it was okay when yeah when you first meet her in uncharted 2 you're like all right she she just don't take shit from anybody (laughs) like she just had that she just gave off that you know like again strong independent woman and she's up to something yeah, she's clearly up to something. She's yeah, she's up to no good. Uh, Lost Legacy goes into a little bit more of that. Um, but no, again, just like another badass playable character. Like it just again, Lost Legacy. I don't think obviously sold as well as the other Uncharted games. However, people still bought it. You know, played it highly, like touted. I mean, again, it's Uncharted series. Like no one was sitting there going like, "Oh, we gotta play as Chloe." Like no, I didn't hear any fucking people complain about that. Um, right. But the last. Uh, woman i did want to get into obviously uh save the best for last is ellie from oh the last of us how fit in do you like that game kind of yeah kind of like it uh i love it actually i kind of <laughs> like it but i actually love it um but it's it's okay good try though um uh, but again like come on dude like fucking ellie are you kidding me like okay first game you only play as her for one chapter of the game so pretty much like a just a quarter of it um she's only 14 in the first game so still kind of teenager growing up um so to speak but now in the last of us 2 which is quite a few years after the events of the first game she's now like adult age you know 18 19 20 years old um oh by the way not only is she a strong female lead um oh she's also gay like oh at me. like that's the thing i didn't know that yeah um in the first game you didn't really know right out of the gate but the dlc her friend riley um that she uh first met up with kind of like her first best friend they in the dlc had like a moment uh, where they kissed and it was kind of i think ellie's first sort of oh hey like maybe i am into women and riley kind of like gave it back so when uh riley dies because that's actually how ellie gets bit um ah, okay. that's how she, so so she gets she gets bit and they like both got bit so they were actually gonna like sit and turn together but ellie is immune everybody i think to this point knows this so god if i'm spoiling this for you guys i'm sorry but the game's been out for a while um and then Riley obviously turned, so Ellie had to put her down. So that was like Ellie's big sort of, I think, grown up moment, only at the age of like fourteen, um, having to put her own first like love interest down. Um, so then we fast forward to The Last of Us Two. She meets Dina, uh, grows a much stronger relationship with her. But like it's again, it's a lead female, and it's not only a lead female, but it's a lead gay female, like. It doesn't. Not a lot of representation before that point. <laughs> seriously, like up to that point, when was the? And not only that, but like, sure, you people could be like, oh, well, I think this character's gay or this or that. Like, you can make those inferences, sure, but like, never has there really been an openly gay character lead. Where, it, yeah, but where that's it's written that way specifically. Exactly is the point because you can you can be a male or female shepherd and you can romance same sex characters. Right. 
but you obviously have many options to use that character. So this is this is the game. It's not a a, a path that you can go on with your with your Correct. selected character. It's like this, That's the this, big difference. This is who she is. This is what it's about. And again, yeah. like it, she's it's at the lead role. And oh, I don't know if you know this or not, but The Last of Us Two is currently fourth on the list of best PS4 selling exclusives, and it's been out for a month. Yeah, give it time. Like, <laughs> I mean, this game has already sold enough copies to break the top five, and it's been uh, uh, only available for, again, a month and a half, two months. Like, if you fuck women don't sell, are you fucking kidding me? I mean, not, not only honestly. that, but the protagonist, Abby, also a female. Oh my God, go figure. Double trouble. Like, just exact, again, like, I don't know. Like, I think wrapping that up full circle with this, like, it, it, the, the comments that Ubisoft made, I think, as you clearly heard here within our uh, the past 35 minutes of us talking, um, females clearly do sell. I think we can come to a full consensus on that. I'll consent with you. I think, like, do you concur? I concur. Um, like, I, like, I just don't get where that comes from. Like, where they even thought that was, like, did they really just sit there and not think about other relevant games, like, at all? Well, you would have to assume that they didn't, right? I, I, I seriously, like, I because if they did and I, still said it, we, that's just, I mean, I know your views on silly. assuming. I know your views. You're not a big assume guy. I so hate when people assume. When you're you, correct. so when you say you have to assume that, it's pretty assumptionation ish. Oh, you're absolutely right with that. Sorry, I just had a fucking stroke. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I mean, my point is, like, could you really? And we're not, I mean, if we're just, again, if you listen to last week's episode, we're just two assholes. Right. It's not like we have this, like, cornucopia of knowledge uh, regarding female representation in video games. Right. But we, for a half hour, just listed all these amazing examples. So if in the face of that, they, they thought about all this and still said that, uh, what, 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 are you, what are you even talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, I have to assume they didn't think about it. No, exactly. We're just two fucking dicks from the Midwest. Like, we we don't have a stake in saying this or that or claiming this in the in the video game realm but it's like all we did is just looked up fucking examples we have a stake in the truth and the truth is (laughs) there are awesome ladies in video games are there many what what are you okay no sorry i don't know if anybody picked that up because my mic is super sensitive but there are some t-storms coming through here in the old uh, state of North Carolina. So I apologize if anybody's hearing some basically like loud bangs in the background of my audio. I just want to make like you're getting very- abducted. <laughs> I just want to make it very clear that I am okay. Um, if anybody's concerned now, up to this point. Um, holy shit. We should wrap this up soon. Uh, what I was saying was uh, there aren't many and uh, hopefully there are more to come. Oh, for and sure. Maybe, maybe the next great female lead will come out of Ubisoft Studio after they clean house after this whole debacle. Sure, no way. <laughs> you think it's going to be somebody else? <laughs> I like to think at this point Ubisoft is they're they're treading on thin ice. I think, and I think they know that, so they're like, uh, 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 like, what do we do? What do we do? And it's like, well, fucking time to put up or shut up, buddy. Yeah, you know what would be kind of cool. A uh, female lead in a Grand Theft Auto game. Ooh, that'd be that'd be radically different from what the franchise has done up to this point. That yeah, true. But then you might get people complaining that it's like, oh, you know, because like you go around and fucking kill people all the time. So I, I feel like that that could work, but also I feel like it's like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, I see what you're saying, but at the same <laughs> yeah. time. You picked up the Grand Theft Auto title. You should have known what you were getting into. I, that's true. And I feel like, again, if you look at a franchise that's Grand Theft Auto, like if you put it like that, I mean, we all know. There's violence in this game. Yeah. <laughs> Sky's blue. What the fuck else do you want to talk about? I just ran down the street and I like I killed a guy. Uh, yeah. Like, w- <laughs> what video games have you been playing up to this point? She, she's like shooting male hookers to pick up their money. Come on. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> Just a piece of shit, bam. <laughs> you know what? I'm about it. I want Rockstar, this game now. Rockstar, make it happen. God. But no, we, we we truly do actually want to say I think the 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 consensus with this with this episode is that um 
again, you know, we're not we're not big video game influencers. We're not we, we're we're nobodies at this point. You know, we're just two guys making a podcast talking about video games. But the biggest thing we want to emphasize is that we don't care really who you are, male, female, gay, straight, you know, whatever. If if you're a video game character lead and you're a badass person, or if even it doesn't even have to be a character, if it's a developer, creator, like just fucking do you. You know, you be you, and if you, you know, whatever. It's we, we we support anybody and everybody who loves video games, in video games, leads, developers. Like, make it happen. I think that's the the thing I really want to have everybody take away from this episode. I agree. I just no further comments to add. Uh, yeah. It's, well, wow, really? I nailed well, it that well. Was... Wow. Thanks, yeah, man. Well. Oh, thank you. It comes from within. Is I think how you wanted to sum up your. Yeah, what you were saying there, I, and, I th- I, and I think you know when you look at comments like what Ubisoft has given off. I mean, again, we all know there there's plenty of things that are going on in in mainstream media that obviously gets you know people upset or talking this and that. But I think this is something where you know don't don't sig- don't single out something saying like oh women don't sell like the character leads like don't just don't because again fucking two nobodies just came up with what five solid examples six maybe more. Oh, yeah. And then countless other supporting (laughs) ladies that have definitely contributed to the success of their franchise. Exactly. So, again, we back everybody and anybody. Um, We're just happy to have the community that we have, and we hope to this episode can kind of spread support, spread some love, whatever the case might be, to anybody and everybody. And, uh, yeah, like I said, just do you. Do if you know, do whatever you feel is in your heart to do, and just know that you got the meltdowns back on it. Absolutely. I wanted to say the backing from the meltdown, but I think some lightning may have hit my apartment and like shocked my brain to reverse shit. So I wanted to say you have the backing of the meltdown. But instead, we just all entered you into an obligation to have our back. So please do. Good work. We we need support. <laughs> so if you do it, you have the meltdowns back. Wait, I didn't agree to that. Too late. D D D D D. Wait wait wait. You saw, you uh, clicked, you clicked. I accept. <laughs> you clicked on my face. Anyway. Oh man. Were we but... are we shouting anybody out at the end of this episode? Oh, uh, we actually are. I am so. I wow. I am. Whew, I'm in a I'm in a so right now. We are shouting out uh, round and round podcast uh, coming to us from the uh, Pod Nation group that we are a part of. Um, that's who we got this week. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I just gave a quick little update earlier on the meltdown madness. We so currently. Madness. Oh god damn it! That's so fucking awesome. Everybody who uses like big mainstream stuff like the keyboard and stuff i'm like i don't fucking need that make your own soundboard that's what we say make your own soundboard hey guess what it's free um we currently have splinter cell pandora tomorrow again super mario 64 uh yeah that's it's not even close so anybody any splinter splinter cell fans out there if you're listening to this sorry but it's too late to vote because (laughs) it's pre-recorded you also were you were about to say splinter fans real quick but then you caught yourself which is fine but you said mm-hmm. splinter f- and my brain completed it as splinter fest <laughs> splinter fest the worst festival on the planet <laughs> they do it actually at the red was at the redwood forest up in washington washington oregon, oregon. both they yeah. parts of both states i think oh. All they do is they go up there, they cut off pieces of wood, and people just get to give each other splinters. The whole, the whole fest is just Splinter like fest. Come on, just like big pieces of wood shoved in people's calves and stuff like that. Good it's like Lord. Who, who can have the biggest splinter put inside of them, and they can like walk around with it. Ugh. Yeah, it's it's a it's a hoot and holler of a good time. Um, All right, I'm gonna take us home then. Unless because oh, that was really the current quick, matchup. Okay, go ahead. Really quick, uh, current matchups that we got Doom 3 going up against House of the Dead. So we got our second arcade game thrown in there. Or third. Is it third? Third. Sorry. Um, The Witcher 3 taking on Dead Space. And then Beat Saber taking on Cruisin' World. Cruisin' World. 
Awesome. All right. Then we're almost done with the first round. That's wow. We're crazy. We're we're cruising right through this. Oh, weird. Cruising world. Son of a bitch. Okay. All right. Follow us Take on us all home, our Josh. socials: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And very exciting. I hope you're excited, Zach. We are currently working on our YouTube channel. So it's not up yet. We're going to work on it throughout the course of this coming week. Um, What's going to be at the beginning, because Zach and I, if you haven't caught on by now, are unfortunate in that we can't record together. We live in different states. So we're going to upload a audio slash video version of the podcast, but it won't actually be you won't see us. You'll just see our logo and the episode will be there. But more excitingly, we're going to work on some original content content of us playing games together. Um, kind of getting <laughs> back to why we actually started this podcast uh, yeah. was the conversations we would have while playing games. And we'll release it on our YouTube channel, obviously. When it does go up, we will put it on all our – we'll post it on all our social medias that the YouTube channel is active. So go follow mm-hmm. us there and stay tuned for new shit. I cannot wait to play video games with you again because you keep turning me down. You're you're that girl on Tinder who keeps going, ah, busy. Sorry, I got to babysit tonight. And I'm like, I just want to fucking grab a coffee. Nope, like, I, I got a wanna... kayak tonight. Yeah, I bet you fucking do. <laughs> it's summer, dude. Like, I, yeah. it, I'm going outside, okay? <laughs> it's summer. Yeah, that's so cool. Sorry. I'm your best friend, you son of a bitch. And you're turning me down. Hey, you remember when you left to go to North Carolina? For a career move. Yes, yeah. I do remember. There we go. We're even. You want my salary doubled from what I was going to be making back in Milwaukee? Yes. Oh, congratulations. Now you make $200 a year instead of $100 a year. Yes. You suck. That's all. That's twice as much. <laughs> no, job. I know, I know. But yeah, I mean, there's just so much fun stuff to do outside, man. I know. Well, I, there's not, not a lot to do out here right now because it is uh, tea storms and, um, yeah, hurricanes potentially coming up near us. So <laughs> Jesus, I'm looking at clear skies and the sun shining through my window. Yeah, I'm looking at death staring at me in the face. Well, then, I don't think anybody wants to hear you die, so time to say goodbye. Uh, no joke. Teague and I are actually like in the process of putting together like a little hurricane emergency fund, like in a little cooler type thing. Oh, sure. Like, you know, water bottle shit like that. So, yeah, no, it's agree. really fun. Um, so, yeah, so you covered everything, hopefully YouTube soon. And, uh, yeah, we just really hope again you guys enjoyed. And please tune in next week. Thanks, everybody. Deuces. Watch out.